is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Minnesota. But for two more games, the White Sox and Twins square off inside U.S. Cellular Field as they both try to salvage some positivity to close out 2016. Unfortunately for Minnesota, this will officially go down as the worst season in Twins history. Last night's loss was the 103rd loss of the season, the most since the team moved to Minnesota and fourth most in franchise history. Welcome to U.S. Cellular Field, everybody. I'm Audra Martin. It's been another rainy day here in Chicago, and unfortunately, no amount of rain can wash away the memories that 103 losses will leave with these Minnesota Twins players. Now, in the midst of it all, though, there have been some positives. Brian Dozier's season, season is certainly the easiest to point to, but no one knew exactly how much of an impact he'd have on the field. We did, however, know he'd have to step into a leadership role left behind with the departure of Torrey Hunter. But when you add in 103 losses, it ends up being a bigger challenge than you'd expect. As a leader, you try to you, you try to instill in a lot of different people, and uh, even though you're losing, you still try to make it fun because you come to the ballpark having fun and expecting to win. Then uh, the results kind of take care of itself, and uh, that was unfortunate this year. But uh, but it's my job as a leader just to kind of uh, to kind of get things rolling. I guess keep people optimistic, uh, fan base in here, locker room coaches, everybody uh, for next year, and uh, hopefully we can make a change. So. Coming up next, Hector Santiago and James Shields square off in game two. Dick Bramer and Berg Bly Levin break down this pair of midseason acquisitions next from the cell. Presented by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us.
24 hours from now, the season will be over with. We're in Chicago, game two of this three game series between the Twins and the Chicago White Sox. Hector Santiago going for the Twins and James Shields going for the White Sox, two pitchers who were acquired by their two respective teams in the middle of the season. And we welcome you to the south side of Chicago. Dick and Burt with you for game number 161. And this season series between the White Sox and Twins has been very lopsided. Usually when that's the case, there's one guy on the team winning all the games who's really beating up the other team. And that guy this year for the White Sox is Melky Cabrera. Yeah, Melky Cabrera, an outfielder. He has had his 66 hits against the Twins this year. 31, excuse me, 66 at bats, 31 hits. That's a 470 batting average. Nine doubles. He's hit one home run. He's driven in 14 runs. And yes, the Twins have struggled against the Chicago White Sox this year. But really, one guy has had pretty good success against them, and that's tonight's starter. That's uh, Hector Santiago. Hector Santiago will go for the Twins twice with the Angels, once with the Twins. He's beaten the White Sox. Yeah, against Cabrera. Cabrera just two for 14. Now, two of those starts coming with the Angels. He pitched a total of 14 shutout innings. Gave up three runs in his only twin start, and the Twins scored him 11 runs, and he won that ball game. Hopefully, they can score a lot for him here tonight. White Sox are known for their good left-handed starting pitching. The Twins will throw their left-handed starter at the White Sox, hoping to even this series in a game apiece and quiet some of these Chicago bats. And otherwise, whether we hope we'll hold off, there's a little rain over the lake. Probably raining right now in Gary, Indiana, but we're fine here. And the Twins have had a bunch of uh, lopsided season series within their division. They are four and fifteen against the Royals, four and fifteen against the Tigers, five and twelve against the White Sox. Something that Paul Molitor would like to change next year, and like to see the Twins win a series in their last series of the year against. The Chicago White Sox. Here's the Menards batting order. Brian Dozier, Jorge Polanco, Max Kepler, Miguel Sano, Kenny Vargas, Logan Schaefer, Byron Buxton, Juan Centeno, and James Beresford getting the start at first base. And that lineup will face James Shields, 34 years old, traded over from the San Diego Padres on June 4th. That's when the White Sox were playing right around 500. They had a really good month of April. They thought that they were going to stay in the race. They got James Shields and he's really had a disappointing season not only with the White Sox also with the San Diego Padres. 
And the White Sox out in the field. Brought to you by Northland Ford. Melky Cabrera is in left field. Lurie Garcia in center. Adam Eaton in right. Todd Frazier, Tim Anderson, left side of the infield. Carlos Sanchez, Jose Abreu on the right side. And Omar Narvez behind the plate again. Yeah, Shields had a very disappointing final start for the Padres. He gave up 10 earned runs in less than three innings. And he's had a few stinkers uh, with the White Sox, too. He pitched uh, twice against the Twins uh, for the White Sox against the Twins. One was a good one, the second one not so good. Couldn't get out of the third inning. Yeah, you know what? You see his record right there with the White Sox, like you mentioned. But he has pitched actually pretty well here over the last three starts. He's o, excuse me, 1 0 with a 2.50 ERA over his last two starts. And he's coming off a win, something that he did not do. 10 pro starts prior to that. Brian Dozier in the box to lead things off for the Twins. And down and away, ball one. Dozier still stuck on 99 runs batted in. He has hit Shields well in his career, 11 for 26, and has hit three home runs. Outside, 2 and 0. Oh. White Sox acquired Shields to help this year knowing full well that he had two years left on his contract and there's a club option on the end of that. Swing and a miss so the twins will see an awful lot of Shields they saw a lot of them when he was with the Kansas City Royals and now he's back in the American League Central for the next two seasons. Yeah he's made this is his third start against the twins this season he's won one he's lost one he has a combined ERA of six over those two starts. Dozier takes out side corner. It's two and two. Dozier thought it was ball three. Big thing for Shields is the walks. 79 walks in 174 and two thirds innings. And Fox Tracks, which you love, Dick, says I, I, it's a strike. I, I don't love it. It's an inanimate object. But Dozier strikes out. Flips the bat has some more words for Pat Holbert. One oh, yeah, good changeup right there. Something off speed that uh, Shields ended up getting Dozier to swing through. So Shields picks up a strikeout. His 129th and 175 innings pitch. Pat Holbert has played duty. Nick Lentz at first. Hunter Wendelstead at second. And Trip Gibson at third. One down. Here's Jorge Polanco. Last night, Carlos Rodon, the White Sox starter, struck out the first seven batters. Strike one at the knees. Holberg, I don't remember this about him, but he's kind of got that Tim McClellan delayed uh, strike call with his right arm. On the ground, easy play for Sanchez. Two down. Shields coming off a start here five days ago against the Tampa Bay Rays where he worked six innings a quality start giving up only one run a couple walks six strikeouts. And now Max Kepler. So a few positives about this 2016 season for the Twins. But the Twins have gotten an extended and for the most part favorable look at a guy I think will be their right fielder for many years to come, Max Kepler. I don't know that anyone thought he'd come up here and hit 17 big league home runs. Swing and a miss 0 2. And the home runs have been pretty few and far between here the last seven months, uh, seven weeks of the season. Well, Shields has an assortment of pitches. He'll try to establish a fastball, not overpowering, cut fastball, curveball, changeup that struck out Dozier. Fastball up, and it's one and two. Fastball clocked at 91. You know, this guy's been an innings eater, really, when he first came up with the Tampa Bay Rays. Nine straight seasons he pitched 200 innings or more. He's not going to do it this year. You're right. The White Sox picked him up to. Deep and an already by twin standards, certainly a deep rotation with Sale and Quintana and Rodon. 
John Danks was released and they've had some issues on the back end of the rotation and this guy was supposed to solidify things this one squirted back to the pitcher Kepler is retired and Shields enjoys a one two three first. Offered to bring him back next year, and Ventura says, Well, I'll let you know at the end of the season. And the White Sox general manager, Rick Hahn, has said uh, he'll hold a media session 11 o'clock Monday morning, and presumably Ventura's status will be clarified then. The Menards batting order for Chicago Adam Eaton, Tim Anderson, Jose Abreu, Melky Cabrera, Todd Frazier, Avisail Garcia, Carlos Sanchez, Omar Narvez, and Luri Garcia. And Hector Santiago on the mound for the Twins. First pitch cracked to right field. One away. Eaton jumped on it, hit it hard right to the right fielder. Santiago making his 33rd start, just like James Shields. He's worked 175 and two thirds in. He's given less hits to innings pitched. A lot of walks. 76 walks, almost like Shields. And Santiago, that type of hit pitcher, you know, he's not going to lay one in there. If the situation calls for it, he's going to work the corners. Traded, of course, for Ricky Nolasco, Alex Meyer, and a, uh, Angel Minor League are also swapped in the same deal. 1 0 to Anderson, and he fouls it back. And Nolasco's pitched well for the Angels. But. Santiago has pitched well for the Twins once he got his feet on the ground and just kind of went back to his game that he did so well in July for the Angels. Yeah, six and zero in the month of July before he got traded with a very good earned run average at 1.78. Now, so again, I, I mentioned it before. You get traded, you want to impress right away, and you try to maybe do a little bit too much. And Santiago is a type of guy. He's kind of a cool. Calm type pitcher doesn't get too excited, and he has to rely on changing speeds. Popped up, backing out of play. Three and two to Anderson, who hit a home run, admired it for a while, too long for the taste of the Twins, and they uh, zipped a fastball behind him later in the ball game. Everything should be quiet and settled by now. Well, here's a youngster right here. I mean, he clobbered that ball all, all, off of uh, Tyler Duffy. Remember a couple pitches earlier, he hit one way foul mm -hmm. and got good wood on it. And then he, he did admire it. And sometimes young kids have to uh, learn a little bit. Three and two to Anderson. And he missed down and in. And Anderson will take a walk. I like how Tyler Duffy summarized it afterwards. He admitted he kind of took exception to it, but he says if you don't like that, don't give them up. Don't give up the home runs. Twins out on the field, brought to you by Northland Ford. Logan Schaefer out in left field again. Byron Buxton in center. Max Kepler in right. Miguel Sano at third. Jorge Polanco. Brian Dozier up the middle. James Beresford at first. 
And Juan Centeno behind the plate. Here's Jose Abreu. One for ten with four strikeouts against Santiago. Ball one. Foul back. One on one. The ball left up right there. Sandy Algo, pretty good move to first base. Anderson at first base, 10 stolen bases and 12 attempts. Sandy Algo's had 15 pickoffs in his career, covering 116 starts. There's a throw to first. Throw the first a little quicker move over there. He's gotten 11 ground ball double plays. He's uh, already picked up career high number of wins with a dozen, but of course, six of those were in one month. Career high number of starts is 33rd. Swing and a miss. Foul tip maybe at a high fastball. Those five innings, he'll tie his career high in innings pitched, 180 and two thirds. The Twins hope he can go beyond that. One and two. Just missed. 93 mile per hour fastball. And he likes to work inside to right handed hitters. Opponents hitting off of them this year 249 right handers 250 lefties 245. So not a big swing between who's at the plate a right handed or a left handed hitter. On Centeno catching Santiago here tonight. Change up missing yeah, three and two. Santiago's already walked one in danger of walking a Brayu but that's part of his game. That's what is attractive. Uh, to I think uh, Paul Molitor and Neil Allen the fact that to what you just said the lefty righty split is minimal. Runner goes and it's ball four Centeno's throw in time but it's unnecessary. Yeah back to back walks for Santiago. I mentioned that's part of his game he has to try to you know nitpick a little bit but uh, not two in a row. Put runners at first and second with one out. And Melky Cabrera had another good night last night against the Twins. Yeah, a couple doubles in his first two at bats, added a single later. And again, 31 hits and 66 at bats against the Twins this year. But only two hits and 14 at bats against Santiago. We told you he's. Santiago's had success against Abreu and Avaseo Garcia, so you, you kind of get a sense these three veteran hitters have had a tough time against Santiago. Because he's willing to pitch inside, he clips the outside corner there, strike one. Paul Molitor was asked about Phil Hughes, who's been throwing the baseball, extending out to about 120 feet, in the hopes that he'll be able to be healthy next year. But wondering about the three returning starters for the Twins, Irvin Santana, Hector Santiago, and Phil Hughes. And Paul wasn't quite sure that we should assume Phil Hughes would be ready to jump back in. But he did admit they're counting on Santiago to be number two behind Santana's number one in the rotation. Barring some uh, acquisitions, popped up to right field. And Kepler comes in. Out number two. Kyle Gibson has had a very disappointing year this year. So we don't know where he might fit in to the rotation next year, but it is without question the uh, emphasis for the Twins to try to get better next year. Well, you're talking about, you know, they're talking about Trevor May, but uh, 
Trevor May wasn't excess when he was put into the rotation, but that's the idea. They think Trevor May needs to go back into that rotation. Phil Hughes hopefully will be healthy. Yeah, they've got a lot of question marks in that starting rotation. Some great arms. You'll, we'll see a Barrios tomorrow. Here's Frazier. And there's ball one. And sad to say, I think we've talked about it all summer, Dick. It's starting pitching. Starting pitching keeps you in games. You win close ball games with good starting pitching. Twins have not won enough close ball games. Off the end of the bat, Beresford, usually a middle infielder, makes that play easily to retire Frazier and strand two batters. And it right over Gary, Indiana. <laughs> Good, leave it there. And it's, and it's going to not hit us. If there's a God in heaven, it won't hit us. We've had 16 rain delays on the season. Santiago talking it over with Centeno, and here's Miguel Sano to start the second inning. Big swing and a miss. Sano one for two against Shields, and the one was a long one, a home run. He starts him off with a slider down and away. Jack swing one and one. So no Vargas and Schaefer facing Shields in the second. One and two. You know, when Shields started this year with the San Diego Padres in the month of April, he was 0 and 4. But four of his five starts were quality starts. They just he just did not get a lot of run support, and then everything kind of caved in after that. And he strikes out Sano on four pitches. Shields picks up his second strike. A good sinker down. <laughs> Good location here, almost a pitch that struck out Dozier. Ball down in the strike zone. 176th strikeout for Sano in 430 at bats. Here's Kenny Vargas, the designated hitter. Outside, ball one. Shields kind of from the old school. He does the over the head type wind up, gets into that balance point, and then releases the ball home. Something that the Twins are hoping that Jose Barrios will maybe watch tonight and see how Shields go about his business to get to that balance point, allow that right arm to catch up 
to your body. That's to left, and it's looping into Cabrera's glove. Two down, and then we'll bring up Logan Schaefer. Schaefer hitting 250. The Twins projecting forward to next year. And this is all subject to the players, same players coming back, and we can assume that that won't be the case with the new uh, general manager and president of baseball operations uh, tinkering with things this offseason. But as it is, Schaefer would be in competition for the fourth outfielder spot for the Twins. Twins project forward having Rosario and left, Buxton in the center, and Kepler in right. One strike to Schaefer. Swing and a miss, two strikes. Good sinker down and away by Shields. Schaefer, 29 years old, let go by the Brewers, ended up playing independent baseball this year. Signed by the Twins in June. Actually, went to spring training with the Nationals. And they let him go in spring training. His major league experience with the Brewers. Five seasons with the Brewers, not a lot of at bats. Lifted to right. And Eaton hardly has to move. Another one, two, three inning for James Shields. Chicago as we head into the bottom of the second inning attention to detail that's the number one thing Brian Dozier says has to be the message next year to avoid having another season like we just saw this year from the twins he says it's little things like always taking taking extra bases avoid stupid outs when you're in scoring position he says the best teams do those things right 100 percent of the time he said a certain element of the game is lost when you focus on just how many home runs you can hit or how fast you throw a ball or your individual statistics and he said that was an issue this year. He says you have to get back to realizing that, yes, this team has talent. They have what it takes to win games, but talent doesn't guarantee those wins. It's a focus of paying attention to the little details, doing them right 100% of the time that will get this team back on track. Guys? Well, thank you, Audra. Santiago with a 1 1 count to Abisail Garcia, then Carlos Sanchez, Omar Narvez. Well, sad to say, you know, Brian Dozier can say all that he wants, but you know, there's, there's got to be a complete overhaul, I think, for this organization. 
you know it just you can't allow a ball club to play as poorly as they did. I know Paul Molitor wants to isolate on it on defense, but they made 126 errors, and that's sometimes not counting the mental mistakes right. you make. And now another three ball count from Santiago. He faced five men in the first inning, walked a couple of them. And now it's three and two, the leadoff man here in the second. It's very frustrating for that man right there because he's a student of the game. He knows how to play the game. He did it as a player. So you know, miss a strikeout. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know if you'd agree with me or not. I I don't know yet. I mean, last year the Twins won 83 ball games. It was a fun season. Take a look at a fastball up and away, and Garcia chasing. I, Paul simply hasn't been able to manage much this year. You know how, how can you how can you blame him or hold him responsible when there's so many games when he's into his bullpen in the fourth inning already. Well, you have to look to talent on the field. He can he can only put the names down. Players are the ones that have to produce and they just have not produced. But I'm going to go back offensively. Yes. I think we scored enough runs to win, you know, more than 55 games, but or 57 games, but comes down to pitching. Well, you're dealing with largely an inexperienced uh, roster among position players up and down the lineup: Buxton's, Sano's, Rosario's, people like that. And I think we've seen it all summer long team falls behind and the quality of the at bats change because they are behind four to one Definitely. rather than you know it's two to one or something like that and, and you know younger players have a harder time staying consistent with their plan at the plate when you're behind all the time well, you look at the White Sox they have Chris Sale he, the guy's a horse now you go out and get James Shields yes you know he struggled this year but he's a better pitcher than he showed this year he's a workhorse then you throw in a Quintana that you know <laughs> to me probably should be in the Cy Young Award voting right but he doesn't have enough wins he doesn't get a lot of run support then you throw that Rodon in that pitch last night things are bright as far as the starting staff for the White Sox fly down the left field line should reach the seats and that's where the twins need to get you know but that's going to take time you're not going to all of a sudden turn it overnight where the twins are going to win a division next year. White Sox are going to finish 20 games ahead of the Twins or thereabouts, but at least the Twins' problem is so easily identified. And for the White Sox, I there's something missing, and there's rumblings that Robin Ventura won't be back next year. Some people think Rick Renteria, uh, who was the Cubs manager up until Joe Madden's uh, availability, oh, nice, nice stop play. at third by Sano, and he fires across. Oh. Good play by Miguel Sano. Nice defensive play right there by Miguel Sano, diving to his left or really falling to his left, rubbing the dirt off his arm. But right there, nice play, good reaction, gets up and shows off that strong arm across the diamond. Two down, and now Omar Narvez. If the Twins are successful in improving their starting rotation, then I think we'll see, we'll be able to maybe fine tune things along the way next year and find out exactly more accurately how the Rosarios, Sonos, and Buxtons will perform. With the White Sox, it's a, it's, it's a puzzle to me to have that good starting pitching, and yet they're going to finish with a losing record this year. Not following the White Sox other than you know when we see them, right. they <laughs> they have had no trouble against the Twins. No, one and two. As much as the Twins have struggled at times offensively, they still scored more runs than the White Sox, hit more home runs. Two and two to Narvez. Narvez last night hitting his first major league home run. Sano no hangs on, hit the heel of the glove, and almost rolled through the webbing. But a one, two, three second for Santiago.
Bucks baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by CenturyLink. Switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprismtv.com. Pleasant night here in Chicago. We're playing game number 161. Byron Buxton will lead off the third inning against James Shields. Six up, six down. Shields has struck out the leadoff batter in each of the first two innings, and now Buxton takes down and away, ball one. Buxton looks to be one of those players, let's hope it'll be as soon as next year, that'll go double digits across the board in extra base hits. Buxton has eight home runs, six triples, 18 doubles. In about a half seasons worth of work. Down and away, two and one. And I think the big thing for Buxton is just making contact. 115 times he has struck out in 291 at bats. Well, he's having a very good month of September. Two and two. And in the month of September, the strikeout rates come down a little yeah, bit. I guess we get excited about that because Buxton, you know, for the last two or three years, have been the guy that you can't miss. He's going to, you know, be the next superstar. And he has not. And if this team, in short order, turns things around and is competitive, Buxton's going to be. He's got to be a big the, part of in the nucleus of the turnaround. Mm -hmm. Three and two to the leadoff man here in the third. Buxton, Centeno, and Beresford in the third. Breaking ball away. Got him. One down, and that'll bring up Centeno. So Buxton strikes out, and Shields picks up his third strikeout. Went with a 3 2 breaking ball. Buxton missed that by a foot. Man strikes out again in the third, and now Centeno. Expect John Ryan Murphy to catch again in the uh, series and season finale tomorrow. But Centeno gets a chance as a left handed batter against the veteran right handed pitcher. Outside. One and one. I think Centeno's done a good job. He has really improved as the season has gone along, and that's what you want to see from a young, upcoming, hopefully, catcher for the Twins. Almost foul into the Twins' dugout. Probably caught a little bit more than anyone thought he would. He's got 172 at bats. That's kind of a high number for a backup catcher. Chopped foul. Oh, he caught. He got called up when Murphy was sent down to Triple A back in May. Kurt Suzuki. Thank him for his visit with Audra for the pregame show about. His time in Minnesota, which very likely will be coming to an end. And Centeno strikes out on the changeup. Change up there, strikeout number four. Bring up James Beresford. Time now for tonight's Toyota Key Stat. And the largest decrease in win percentage. And to no one's surprise, the Twins are on the top of that chart. Pirates won 98 last year, and all it got them was a one game playoff game that they lost. Cardinals in the playoff hunt this year, even though they've come down. Beresford grounds it on a couple of hops right to Frazier. And a perfect first trip through the order for James Shields.
probably a disappointing year for the Twins, but I'm going to miss this game probably by Tuesday morning. You know, Dick, it, it, I, I'm the same way. You know, you look at the season, yes, it's been frustrating, but it's still a game baseball game. These fans here, they pay good money to watch these guys play. So whether it's game 163 or 161, or it's the first game of the year, you go out there and you bust your tail in. Wanted in the air over the Twins dugout. One strike. Garcia, Lurie Garcia, leading off the third. Avisail Garcia batted in the second inning, and now two quick strikes. Yeah, it's, I'm happy that Irvin Santana made his start the other day in Kansas City. I'm, I'm happy that Chris Sale is going to go out there tomorrow. Right. You know, James Shields. It's been a frustrating year for him. You know, losing 18 ball games, but he's out there in game 161, trying to win another ball game. Thank you. All third strike. Chris Archer took the mound the other day with 19 losses. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to lose 20, and he didn't lose 20, but he wanted the ball. Uh, you find out an awful lot about a player when you're limping home like this, figuratively. Up the uh, part of Fox Track, the lower. Now I want to set the record corner. straight. I, I make it a practice not to lo love inanimate objects. I like my car. I like my boat. I don't love them. I love the people in my life. I don't love Fox tracks, but I respect it. Now, do, you, do you have another sport? Do you do you love baseball? Or do you uh, just like it? Uh, I, just, See, I, I love pretty, golf. I, I, I love baseball. You can't love an inanimate object or a thing. You shouldn't. Yes, you any, no, you shouldn't. Yes, you can. It's to left. Well, number two. Well, what makes you say that what I can love or can't love? <laughs> Think about it. You can love whatever you yeah, want. Well, that's that, what I'm saying. But that speaks to the type of person you are. Well, I'm telling you that I just you I don't love a lot of things other than people. There's not I, a food that right. you say I, that I, I really I, love. I had this barbecue food. to ribs at my favorite restaurant today, and I really, really like them. And I like deep dish pizza here in Chicago. Right. But I don't love it. You can't love something that can't love you back. Oh, can yes, you? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. Yes, you here's can. here's where I've learned over the years hey, to I'm change subject. That Ryder Cup yeah, here yeah, going on. Yeah, I've I love learned, what the U.S. Yeah, is yeah. doing right now. I've learned over the years that when we get to this point, it's my job to, to change, go, the, go change to the change the subject. <laughs> See, they love pizza. No, well, they probably like they pizza. Like In your opinion, they like pizza. Two and zero oh to Tim Anderson, and he lines the first hit of the game to left field. Something off speed right there, and Anderson stayed back nicely. I tell you what, this young man, even though you know he maybe was a showboating a little bit when he hit the home run, he's having a solid rookie season for the White Sox. Came into the game hitting 284. Waited back nicely. Good extension right there, driving that ball in the left field with some top spin. And with two down, the first hit of the game is recorded. Here's Jose Abreu drew a walk in the first inning. Santiago's given up nine stolen bases, but in 16 attempts. That's during his time with the Angels and the Twins. We talked about Kurt Suzuki, and you know, offensively, he's been a really solid performer for the Twins even before he came to the Twins. But defensively, he had some throwing issues the last couple of years that really allowed other teams to do more running than the Twins would like. All back, and that'll be one thing that uh, to watch in the offseason. Whoever's going to do the catching, we would expect, whether it's John Ryan Murphy and Centeno or someone that the Twins. Bring up from the minor league, Stuart Turner, or someone they acquire in the offseason, that they'll be a better defensive catcher. Yeah, uh, opponents have stolen 78 times this year. They've been caught only 20 times. Two and one. And we just left, you know, Sandy. We just left Kansas City, where you know, you know I mean, Salvador Perez throwing out about 45 percent of potential base right. stealers. So he can cut down the running game on some ball clubs. Two 
drifts outside. You know, another three ball count. Again, if Santiago is going to be pitching for the Twins in the next few years, you just have to ride these mm -hmm. at bats out. He'll throw a lot of pitches in a short amount of time. 116 major league starts doesn't have a complete game. This is in with a fastball there. Second time he's walked Abreu. But he's also smart enough to realize that Abreu is the big bat in the middle of the Chicago lineup that's been really productive as of late. And so with two outs, Santiago pitches Abreu carefully. Carsoup.com trivia question. Who holds the White Sox record for most hits in a single season? Abreu has 182. You see the rest of the list. You know, it jumps out at me as Harold Baines. Oh, okay. White Sox always seem to have power hitters. That I can remember. Check swing, pitch up, fastball. Might be a leadoff hitter. You mentioned Tim Raines last, you know, that he's been here, but I don't. No, I mean, but this, you're talking about a charter member of the American mm -hmm. League. They go well, back a long way. That's true. Yesterday's uh, question, I think, mm -hmm. went back to what, 1925. 30, 30, yeah, 35 or 25. Popped up right side, Barrisford. In the outfield grass underneath it to end the inning. The White Sox leave two more aboard and we head to the fourth scoreless. Perfect through three. And the last time he didn't fare well at all against the Twins. All right, got some balls up in the air and three home runs that he gave up. Uh, three of the 38 he's given up this year. That's the most in the major leagues. Well, we'll see if the Twins have better at bat second time through the order, starting with Dozier in the four. Thinking about the uh, trivia question, most hits. White Sox have had just two different players win batting titles since they entered the American League back at the start of the last century. Strike one. Well, I'm going to mend. I'm just going to say Nelly Fox. That'd be a good guess. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say uh, Luke Applin, who won batting titles back in the what 30s and 40s. Old aches and pains. His nickname. Did you get that on your website there? No, no. I just was looking at batting title, and I had forgotten Frank Thomas won a batting title more recently. You know, he walked a lot, so I don't think he's going to be the answer to our trivia question. 0 oh and 2 to Brian Dozier. That's something, isn't it? I mean, they are a charter member of the American League, and in their history, they've had just three batting titles. 
Tony Olivo alone has had three. Rod Carew seven. Kirby Puckett one. In about half, uh, less than half the time. Two and two now to Dozier. Yeah, I wonder because you know most ball clubs display their retired numbers, and I don't see them anywhere in this ballpark. Unless they're up behind us. Oh, there, there they are. Yes, the retired numbers are above us. Mm -hmm. They're there's trying up. to keep it a secret from us. Oh, there's a lot of things above us. There there's there's Nelly Fox, Fox, Harold Baines, Luke Appling, Minnie Mimosa, Luis Aparicio, Ted Lyons, Billy Pierce, Carlton Fisk, and Jackie Robinson that's retired everywhere. Popped up near the Chicago dugout. Out of play. You saw Paul Canerco's numbers already been retired. At least they had the uh, good sense to wait until he retired before they retired his number. They retired Harold Baines's number right after they traded him to Texas. And then he came then back he came and finished. Back. Yeah. You know, I mean, technically, if your number's retired and you come back, you shouldn't be able to wear it again. He had to wear another number, I think. <laughs> Three and two to Dozier trying to get a board to get Shields to pitch from the stretch. And again, Shields, he did that earlier. Started his wind up and then back off the rubber. Yeah, he's had good games, he's had bad games, almost like Kyle Gibson this year. That's the type of year that uh, Shields has had. And Dozier takes a breaking ball for a walk, and Shields will have to go into the stretch with a man aboard. This week on Vikings Beyond the Gridiron, see why Harrison Smith and Andrew Sandeo have become such good friends on and off the field. Learn how the defensive line is working to carry on a long tradition of success in the history of the franchise, and hear from a wide receiver who's the perfect example of what defines the 2016 Minnesota Vikings. Beyond the gridiron tonight after Twins Live on Fox Sports North. Here is Polanco. Ground ball to second, his first time up. Dozier a threat to steal. And he dies back. Yeah, Brian with 18 stolen bases and 20 attempts. That's one area that the Twins have done a pretty good job of. You know, 91 stolen bases have been caught only 32 times. Squares and takes a ball. No, takes a strike. My apology. Yeah, clubs have run against Shields when he was with the Padres and here in Chicago. 18 stolen bases in 21 attempts. And he does have that high leg kick. It usually gives a potential base dealer a couple, maybe a step or two. One strike to Polanco and a snap throw to first. Right, one thing he does, he has quick feet. 35 pickoffs in his career. And for Shields, this is his 351st Major League start. A high drive to right field. Adam Eaton goes back and Polanco. Drives a two run home run into the bullpen. That's a 39th home run that Shield has allowed, and Polanco with his fourth home run, his second as a left handed hitter. So the Twins take a 2 0 lead thanks to Polanco's two run home run. For the Twins, 197th home run hit this year. And a no doubter to right from Polanco. Yeah, fastball right there. Polanco, good solid swing. And now Kepler hits a rocket. He nearly shaved James Shields. Anderson was there to catch it. But Kepler hit his out about as hard as Polanco hit his home run. One down. Kepler jumping on that first pitch right over the shoulder of Shields and Anderson who was shading him up the middle made the diving catch. Now Miguel Sano struck out swinging on four pitches his first time up. Taking low ball one.
One and one. There is Polanco. I think he has really impressed a lot of people. And a liner to Frazier. Starting to get loud down around home plate in the top half of the inning here. Yeah, first time through the batting order, not a lot of hard hit balls off the of Shields, but the second time around, the Polanco home run, Kepler hitting it right on the button, and Sano hitting it sharply, but right at Frazier. And now Vargas with a fly ball to left his first time up. Vargas uncoils fouls. One strike. It's to short right. Sanchez was playing in short right. It's Eaton who comes in to make the catch. And the Twins are done, but Dozier coaxes a leadoff walk. Polanco clobbers a home run, and the Twins are up 2 0. Two nothing lead in the fourth but before the game today I talked to Kurt Suzuki about his future and he says the one thing he knows for sure is that he's definitely not ready to hang things up and a big reason is because his second son was just born and he wants to be able to bring him to the games and bring him into the clubhouse and see him watch these games now he also feels like he still has a lot to offer he says I might not be the biggest guy I might not be the best or someone who hits 800 foot home runs but I am a guy that still shows up wanting to play every day and gives it a hundred percent every single day that I'm at the ballpark but guys I also asked him if he'd ever considered maybe taking you know a future in broadcasting with us and he laughed and said not a chance I hate being on camera which was ironic considering I asked him the question with a camera in his face but Kurt Suzuki <laughs> is certainly one of those guys who is always willing to talk and I know we all agree makes our jobs a little bit easier very good guy yes he is thank you very much Audra I mean Kurt uh, you know came over in 2014 Frazier pops it up near second base and Polanco calls him off makes and the catch one away and he made the all-star team in 2014 for the twins <laughs> I'm just trying to look it up here. Osmeal Pinto was the other catcher. And I think the thought was, the hope was, that over time, Pinto would grow into the everyday role and Suzuki would 
and it'll recede into a backup role and it didn't happen that year and it didn't happen this year either with the twins bringing in John Ryan Murphy. Pinto's bounced around he had some concussion issues and looked to be a very promising hitter and a developing defensive catcher. One and oh to Avasail Garcia swing and a miss one and one. Garcia striking out to start the bottom of the second inning off of Santiago. He has two strikeouts. And a liner to Polanco. And that one looked like it sailed on him toward the end. Two down. And that'll bring up Carlos Sanchez. 2017 season tickets are on sale. You can choose from the full season, partial season, or the ever popular flex plan. You can check out the season ticket packages that include membership in Sweet Spot, the Twins season ticket benefits and rewards program. Go to twinsbaseball.com or call 612 375 7454. Two down. And now Sanchez takes track one. Opening day. This is the only thing that gets me through the winding down of the previous baseball season. Looking ahead to next year. Opening day, April 3rd at Target Field. Going to be a different spring training too with the WBC. Mm -hmm. These spring training games for fans who want to go down to Florida. Uh, I think the first one is February 22nd, something like that, 23rd. Bouncer to short. Polanco kept busy. A pop up, a line drive, and a ground ball. And a one, two, three, third, fourth, rather, for Santiago. Compliments of a Jorge Polanco home run into the bullpen and right the 197 for the Twins this year the third highest total they've ever had. Boy, and you have to go back to the early 60s 63 and 64 to see a ball club that hit over 200 home runs so Twins hoping to still make it happen get into that 200 home run club. 86 87 twins each hit 196 the uh, Mount Crushmore group of 87 Bernanski hit 32 Gaetti hit 31 Herbeck hit 34 Puckett with 28 that had just had some pitching they might have amounted to something <laughs> uh. You won a ball at home and you lost them all on the road. You got into the postseason and ran the tape. Well, we had the advantage actually because we had the 10th player on the field. That being the fans. Unbelievable series, and the same thing happened in 91 against the Braves. Players who were on both teams, Tom Bernanski was not. He was on 87, not 91, but players who were on both teams. 
remark that the 87 one is special because it was the first, the first one. Mm -hmm. And the 91 team was better than the 87 team, had better starting pitching and all of that, three and one. And now ball four, Schaefer starts the fifth inning with a walk. Hey, twin fans, don't forget at home games, you bring your circle Tom Bernanski, you bring your circle me Burt signs. And if you get circled, you may find yourself in a Minnesota lottery winner circle where you could win $100 worth of lottery scratch off tickets, courtesy of the Minnesota lottery. So you have till April 3rd to start making those signs. <laughs> Last time uh, Shields was in a uh, in a stretch position, he gave up the home run to Polanco. Maybe Buxton's turn. Mm -hmm. He has eight on the year. Yeah, seven of them in a month of September. Can't believe it's October first already. Twins hit 41 home runs in a month of September. At the knee strike one. That's a season high for home runs in a month. For the twins. Tap foul. 0 and 2. Buxton struck out swinging his first time up. Exciting October baseball, including tonight and tomorrow, maybe Monday before the playoffs even get started. Red Sox and Jays tied at two in the third. Tigers trailing the Braves two to one. Jordan Zimmerman trying to pitch as get as many outs as he can in his mm -hmm. longest start since June 30th. Two strikes. Buxton takes down an in ball one. And the Giants today beat uh, Kershaw. Mm -hmm. Mets got into the uh, wild card game for the National League. So the Giants and Cardinals are going to be the other representative, one or the other. Yeah, both of them winning today. So the Giants have that one game advantage. And now outside. Of course, it depends on what happens today and tomorrow, but it's entirely possible there could be a three or even a four way tie for the two spots in the American League. Mm -hmm. Two and two to Buxton. Deep to left. Cabrera going back. Buxton goes deep. <laughs> a leadoff walk in the fourth, a home well, run. A leadoff walk in the fifth, and another home I run. I guess the idea is to get Shields in the uh, into the stretch position. You know, one thing we've seen, and yeah, the strikeouts are still too numerous, but the ball jumps off this man's bat. It looked like he was out in front and put the barrel well, on it, and Cabrera never moved. And you know, in his last at bat, you said, you know, here's a guy that could be. You know, double digits in every double, triple home run. Look at that. That ball was down and away. Yep. He's so strong, and when he can extend his arms and make contact, that ball does jump off his back. So the Twins take a 4 nothing lead. Easy fly to left off the bat of Centeno. Cabrera comes in to make the catch, one away. And for Shields, that's his 40th home run allowed. Hey, it's only the fifth inning. You know, I know your record is 50. You don't think you can give up 10 more home runs? Well, he's worked 177 innings now. I work 270. <laughs> so if he throws another 100 innings, I bet you he breaks my record. Ball one to James Beresford. Well, the two run home runs and now 198 on the season for the Twins. 2 0. There's only been three hits in this ball game, two by the Twins, both of them two run home runs. White Sox have one, and that was a single by Anderson.
Beresford not likely to hit a home run, but I'd like to see him get a double here and give Dozier a chance to get that 100th run batted in. You know, Dick, as the season winds down, I know as a player, it always comes down to the last couple of days. You start, you know, talking to your teammates whether they're going to do that winter, and then you look around, and you think, boy, I wonder how many guys may not be able to wear a major league uniform next year or be with another ball club. What, you know, is this the only time you're going to be together this year? I look at a guy like Beresford that spent, you know, 10 years in the minor leagues. Is this going to be it for him? So you want to hold on to every at bat and every memory you can. Two down now on the fifth and it's not too early to start planning your 2017 celebrations at Target Field. Target Field suites are available for single game rental for groups of 16 to 150 plus. You can enjoy a climate controlled experience and a fantastic view of the Twins game with food and beverage included. Learn more at twinsbaseball.com slash groups. Or call 833 Twins to schedule your suite at Target Field. Dozier lifts one high to left center field, but in the ballpark. And the Twins get a leadoff walk to Schaefer. Buxton follows suit with a home run, and it's four to nothing. Boy, look at the wide eyed enthusiasm yeah. for that young lad. I, I saw him. <laughs> I saw him before the game. He's with pops right there. And always a smile on his face. I saw him earlier smiling. He's Loving every minute here. of it. And meanwhile it's been another good one for Hector Santiago. Against the White Sox. Omar Narvez leading off the fifth and Santiago misses one and one. Again, making his fourth start against the uh, his former teammates or organization. A lot of these guys weren't with the maybe facing Santiago here, but uh, he's pitched outstanding. Good pitch right there. Marvez checks, changing speeds well. Garcia will follow then Adamy. Santiago, total of 20 innings against the White Sox coming into this ball game. And he only allowed 11 hits and only three runs. And the three runs off of him came in his start earlier in September on the third. Breaking ball line foul. You know, it might go down as a trade that'll help both teams. I don't know what it'll do for. Santiago and Alaska going back home to Southern California. So it should be a good deal on the personal side for Alaska. Fastball off the plate. 
Well, the Twins needed some left-handed starting pitching. They're, the organization's been thin in that category in terms of having major league ready left-handed starting pitching. That's why they re-signed Tommy Malone. Another foul. Malone likely won't be back with the Twins this year or next year. That's why I said what I said when uh, Bel Belford was up. You know, you just don't know if guys are going to be with another yeah, organization yeah. or if you're going to keep playing baseball at this level. Another foul. As many different players that the Twins have uh, run out there this year, I suspect there's going to be more than a handful who won't be here next year who mm -hmm. said, well, I had my chance. At least I had my chance. Right. Another 2 2. Zipped inside. And it's full count. Well, 4 0 lead. You need uh, Narvis to swing the bat right here. No free passes. And Santiago knows that. He's walked three, giving up just one single. And he gave up another single. Santiago thought about trying to drop that left hand to knock that ball down, but he made the right choice and let it go into center field. That'll bring up Lurie Garcia. Sanford Health Injury Report. How about Matt Holliday yeah. coming off the bench, hitting a home run in what might be his last at bat in St. Louis for the Cardinals? Yeah, I said, How do you hit a home run with tears in your eyes? And he took that ball to right field and. Everybody gave him a standing ovation. Teammates up on the step, congratulating him. Had some rather emotional home runs lately. Led Ms. Diaz with his grand slam in honor of Jose Fernandez. D. Gordon's trot around the bases on the first at bat after Fernandez's death. One strike to Garcia. Foul back and Santiago getting a lot of swings and a lot of fouls here in this fifth inning and that's what we've seen from him. He basically has been about a six inning pitcher this year and along about the fifth or sixth inning aren't many swings and misses anymore just a lot more contact. Well, he's had 11 double plays turned behind him see if he can get a ground ball here. He does but uh, that's foul. Seventy five pitches. Twins would like to think he could get through six innings here tonight. Got him looking. A change up right there. So the second time that Garcia took a call third strike. Strikeout number three for Santiago. Remember the last time we showed it, it was down a little bit. This one caught the corner and again down and in. I'll bet you Fox Tracks had that inside. Ball one. Eating the batter, a liner to right and a liner to left. Side again, two and zero. Oh. Foul back, two and one. Atlanta still leading Detroit, two one, top of the fifth. Orioles had a bullpen meltdown. Game against the Yankees. The Yankees came back to beat him seven to three. The Orioles started uh, the day with a one-game lead over Toronto and a two-game lead, two and a half-game lead over Detroit. He takes strike two, and it's a good thing we've got a wild card race because the divisions are 
All salt of the way mm -hmm. in both leagues. On the outside corner and Eaton. Eaton thinks that's a ball. Or that it was strike two. I think Eaton got confused as to what the count was. So he is called out on the strike. So back to back strikeouts for Santiago with four now in the ball game. Yeah, that's outside. How do you figure? There's a line there and that ball is just on that line. I can see some dark line. blue. I can see some Jeez. dark blue between Jeez. the circle Jeez. and the rectangle. Popped up. Sano coming in. <laughs> and then flip the ball. Almost hit Santiago on the noggin. Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. What's yours? Beautiful city love coming to Chicago. I love watching Miguel Sano try to catch pop ups. Strike at the knees. Now where's that? There's that word love again. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Fly to left. Polanco homered his first or last time up. This one uh, caught by Cabrera went away. And that'll bring up Max Kepler. Kepler in his last at bat after Polanco hit the home run. Next pitch, he lined it right up the middle, right over the right shoulder of Shields. And Anderson made a nice diving catch to retire Kepler. 0 for 2. And Kepler takes it all the way, watches it all the way in, takes a low ball one. Winter in California. Yeah, San Francisco area. Mm -hmm. And a strike. Actually, he said too he's going to head over around Christmas time, go over to Germany and mm -hmm. spend some time in Florida too. He has a place down there in Fort Myers. So he's going to do some traveling. Two and one. How about that during the winter someone that travels all summer long what, what are you going to do during the winter I'm going to travel. <laughs> Pull foul. Two and two. Well, 
young man just 23 years old I think has left a nice impression with the twins this year Max Kepler came up a little bit last year only in three games He's up at the end of the year and he got a hit mm -hmm. you know, people made a big deal about it I don't know that anyone thought he'd have the playing time or get the at bats this year that he's gotten remember at the start of the year the twin stat still had Oswaldo Arcia in the mix. Three and two to Kepler with one gone in the sixth. Tap to the right side, easy play for Sanchez. Two down. The uh, timeless moment tonight brought to you by Coors Banquet on this day in 2006. The Twins clinched the American League Central on the final day of the season after the twi uh, Tigers were swept by the Royals in extra innings. And you remember 40 some thousand fans at the Metrodome hung around to watch the completion of the Detroit Kansas City game and it was a classic example of be careful what you wish for because it might come true. Twins were prepared to go to New York to play the Yankees in another playoff series as the wild card team. Instead they won the division and hosted the Oakland A's and were swept. Here is Sano. And a strike one and one. That was the year that in my mind it, it, it just it got away from the twins. The Liriano injury changed everything. They were loaded in 06. Had a league MVP in Justin Morneau. They had not one. But two dominant left handed starters. Most teams would love to have one. Johan Santana won the Cy Young Award that year, and early in the season, he was the second best left hander on the staff. Yeah, Lariano was hot. Two and one. And Sano pounds it off his foot foul. And he'll have to walk that off. Ball rolled all the way. That rolled 200 feet from home plate after hitting his foot. Ordinarily they get around the third base bag and then they run out of steam that ball kept rolling down the left field line 200 feet from home plate. And so no strikes out. Twins go down one, two, three in the six. Scoreboard looks pretty attractive too, four to nothing. Get ready for MLB postseason where all that matters is October. The NLDS starts October 7th on FS1. 
Jose Abreu will lead off the sixth for Chicago against Hector Santiago, pitching with a four nothing lead. On the outside corner, strike one. Now Santiago's only given up two hits, a single to Anderson in the third, and then a leadoff base hit to Navarez in the last inning. Santiago's walked the Brayu twice in the first inning, and then with two out, he did it again in the third inning. Abreu like uh, Abreu like Brian Dozier sitting at 99 runs batted in. Todd like Dozier got off to a slow start this year. Yeah, and Todd Frazier. A couple hitters later at 98. Deep to right center field. Buxton in the gap and a collision and somebody caught it. Buxton. Another one of those balls that if it were hit in July and August it would have gone out of the ballpark but on a cool Saturday evening here Buxton had just enough room. Well Buxton has so much speed and also Kepler you know Buxton right there you can hear him almost saying I've got it I've got it but a little collision but after the catch. And Santiago saying oh good they're both OK. Santiago probably imagining uh, the two balls that were hit out there last night that Buxton didn't catch. And Buxton, I'm sure, thinking that too. I guarantee you, he went after that one saying, I'm catching that one. I might run into Max Kepler, I might run into the wall, but I'm going to catch it. Chipped foul. 0 oh 2. Cabrera with a fly to right and a pop up to first. You know, we started the show with the talking about Melky Cabrera, how he's hit the twins so well this year, but. Not against Santiago over their meetings. Just two hits now in 16 at bats. We talked about you know, Cabrera, switch hitter, but he's been tough on Jose Abreu. He's been tough on Abisail Garcia. And it's nice to see a veteran pitcher go after some veteran hitters, right handed hitters, and have some success. He changes speeds well. He works all the corners of the plate. Now they're going to go inside. That's to short left. 90th pitch of the night. Schaefer with the catch two down. It was nice to see the catcher Centeno sat inside and the ball was middle in. And Cabrera kind of kind of tied him up to where he couldn't get the barrel of the bat out. And he hit the fly ball to left. So two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Pitch count 20 used last inning was the most. Right now at 90. Parts of three years, and Santiago pitched just over 200 innings for the White Sox. Frazier with a swing and miss. Yeah, he came up. He made his major league debut for the White Sox on July 6th in 2011, and basically was a reliever. And then finally, uh, in 2013, they put him in that starting rotation and traded over to the Angels. Two quick strikes to Todd Frazier. Popped up. And it's beneath us. Santiago's, again, after that rough start he had uh, with the Twins, adjusting to whatever new routine he was on and whatever focus the Twins uh, put him on, he said he's just gone back to what was successful for him with the Angels. And he's looked more and more like somebody the Twins can rely on next year. If it's serving Santana and then Santiago, and the key guys, one of the key guys, there'll be several. It'll be a Kyle Gibson, who will next year be in his fourth full year of the big league. Good inning for Santiago in the sixth.
the 23 year old providing some pop. Yeah, Jorge Polanco with Dozier's walk in the fourth inning hit a home run, his fourth of the year. Second as a left handed hitter. And then after a walk to Schaefer, it's Buxton's turn to hit the two run home run. Four nothing lead. And Hector Santiago has held it up. Only two hits allowed, both of them singles. And so now in the seventh inning, Kenny Vargas will lead things off against James Shields. Vargas, Schaefer, and Buxton. Outside, ball one. I mentioned the timing uh, is, is critical when you acquire players, and in the case of the White Sox, they were willing to assume most, not all, but most of Shields' contract because they thought they were going to be. In the hunt for a playoff spot in the last weekend of the year, and they're not. Yeah, Shields making 21 million this year, 21 million in the next two years, and then the team option in 2019. Tampa right side, Tim Anderson over the first one away. White Sox were getting a, a veteran pitcher with the nickname of Big Game James, and as you can see, that's kind of a misnomer. In the playoff games that he's pitched in, his record is not very good at all. I have no idea where they came up with that. I don't know either. Maybe in Tampa. You know, the Rays had not uh, been to postseason and stuff. And I had, I'd have to look up. Maybe he pitched the final game to get him in. Well, it's a kind of a ripoff of James Worthy, the, uh, the NBA star, who was considered a big game player for the Lakers, but. Uh, my goodness, his his postseason record not good at all, and now he's had a terrible time for most of the regular season this year. One strike to Schaefer. But you know what? I would take him. I would. I like this guy. I, I think he's a workhorse. He, you know, he'll give you 200 plus innings. 40 home runs. So. He's just having an off year. <laughs> oh, he's having an off year. The guy's a workhorse. Always has been. He's always healthy. I don't think he's been on a disabled list in his career. Yeah. They still talk reverently about him in Kansas City and how his influence in the rotation right. was a key thing in getting the not so not just the games but the attitude turned around. Right. Hey, you're going to have bad years, you know, and I guarantee you he's going to come back and have a better year next year. Inside one and two. Schaefer drew a leadoff walk in the fifth, and then Buxton hit a home run to double the Twins' lead to four to nothing. And Schaefer rung up two down. Well, he went back in there again. Didn't get the call hit the first time, but went back in again. Got a six strikeout. Fox tracks presented by Carrier. Fox tracks had it as a strike. And you like Fox tracks? I do. I like it. I don't love it, but I do like it. Strike one to Buxton. He fell behind 0 and 2 in his last at bat. Worked the count even, and then drilled one about halfway up into the seats and left. Twins have had 10 players in double digits in home runs. Buxton, if he hits another one, would be the 11th. Two and one. Now three and one. The major league record for players on a roster with 11 or more, 10 or more home runs is 11. The 04 Tigers and the Astros last year. And now Buxton with a two out walk, and we'll see if he wants to steal second base. Yeah, second walk for Shields. 
If you're looking to keep your young ball player active this offseason, you can look no further than the Twins Youth Camps presented by the Select Heartland Chevy Dealers. Camps are geared toward youth 7 to 14. They begin MEA weekend, which is in the middle of October, and continue through March of 2017. Instructions led by Twins personnel as well as top college and high school coaches. Training focuses on hitting drills to improve swings, throwing lessons to gain velocity while avoiding injury. Registration open twinsbaseball.com slash training. Yeah, it's, you know, that's a third walk for James Shields. Centeno the batter. The Twins have a freebie here. They're leading four to nothing and maybe the fastest guy in the league. Do they want to see be more aggressive in situations like this? They know all they need to know about Shields, but they haven't seen Narvez do much throwing, so this might be one to bookmark. Again, Shields very quick with those feet. And he'll try to uh, change his wind up a little bit in the stretch position, hold it a little bit longer. Maybe throw over a couple times. And he wants to talk to Narvez. This might be he say you know let's try a pitch out the first pitch quick trip to the mound Buxton kicking some dirt around about where he extends his lead. You know what Buxton does when he takes his lead he goes out toward right field so he can when he dives back he can get that corner of the bag on the outfield side and they pitch out. Yep. Shields almost hit the outside corner but that's uh, a rarity well, these I think days. That's why I called the catcher out. Let's try it. And now down and in. Now the count's two and zero, oh, and the Twins may want to play this out and see if Centeno draws a walk instead. Sometimes as a pitcher you worry more about that base runner with two outs than the guy at the plate you fall behind you have to come in with a hittable pitch. There's a longer hold. Centeno hits it to right center field. Buxton flies around second to third he'll be waved home Centeno with a double and the twins with two outs tack on an insurance run. Well, it seems like every time Shields tonight has gotten into that stretch position, the Twins have scored. And exactly what I was talking about, Dick, you know, you worry so much about that base runner that he fell behind in Centeno, had to come in with a hittable pitch, and Centeno with his 11th double, you know, a 2 0 fastball, and Buxton and his speed with two outs. It's off to the races for Buxton with those long strides. He scores the fifth run of the ball game. So Centeno driving in his 24th run. Third time tonight that the Twins have backed up a shield walk with an extra base hit. First two were home runs and now Centeno's double. Beresford chance to drive in his first big league run. A roller into the hole. That's going to be trouble. And Beresford beats it out. Yep. An infield hit, Centeno to third. And Dozier will have a chance with that 100th RBI 90 feet away. You knew that was going to be trouble for Anderson right there because Beresford gets down that line very quickly. And he was shading him up the middle. Anderson you see where he's playing and the ball hit to the right Frazier can't get it. And Beresford getting an infield base hit. And now Dozier. Twins have gone walk double single after the second out. And Dozier with 99 runs batted in and a hit here will get him to the century mark. Strike on the outside corner.
Down and in 2 0. One on one. Oh, beg your pardon. I want to see Brian pick up his 100th RBI. Now two and one. Second baseman Sanchez lined up behind the second base bag. A lot of room on the right side of the infield with. Abreu holding on Beresford. Off speed breaking ball right there. Evens a count. Shields taking something off this breaking ball, the curveball. Two and two. Foul. You know, it's obviously a lot harder to hit a home run than just drive in a run. Brian shot past the 30 home run mark and kept right on going. He shot past the 40 home run mark and kept right on going. But he's been stuck on 99 runs batted in for a while. Two and two. Full count. And Polanco on deck. See if Shields give him gives him a hittable hit here. A pitch to hit. Strike him out. Change up. Twins get another run, a Buxton walk, and a Centeno double, and it's five to nothing. And now greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile and it's fun to scoreboard watch the last weekend of the season. Mentioned the Orioles had a bullpen meltdown but they're still in the top wild card spot. Toronto Boston tied. Nick Marcakis for Atlanta Justin Upton for Detroit late her uh, recent home runs it's still 3 2 Atlanta and the Mariners need to win both games in uh, Oakland. Yes it's a must win for Seattle tonight. Twins leading here five to nothing. Hey, we waited now until the home half of the seventh inning, but I know you want to join me in wishing Rod Carew a very happy birthday today. Also, Jeff Reardon's birthday today. Yeah, Roberto Kelly, former twin. A happy birthday to all three of those former twins. Roberto's still on the coaching staff with the Giants, I believe, isn't he? They got a sure. 
big win today. Five to nothing twins and Hector Santiago sailing along. He has given up just two hits, both of them singles. He'll face Garcia, Avisail Garcia, Carlos Sanchez, and then Omar Narvez. Yeah, Garcia's had a tough time against Santiago. He's 0 for 12 now and he has struck out six times. Eduardo Escobar taking over for Brian Dozier at second base. Paul Molitor figuring that he's hoping anyway that Brian Dozier won't hit anymore having just made the last out of the seventh inning. Oh and two to Garcia. There's something about Santiago's delivery. We see a lot of veteran hitters flail away a flail away at pitches that aren't close to being strikes. Why well, sneaky fast. I think uh, that's the best way to describe him. He has a very short left arm as far as how he delivers throws a little bit across his body and the ball kind of explodes on you you know we're talking about that with Ian Kennedy when Kennedy pitched against the twins in Kansas City same thing one and two well, lifted foul so a lot of guys will bring that arm all the way back and we'll see you know Jose Barrios tomorrow with that long arm where Santiago's more of a short armor and he hides the ball well. Swing and a miss a fastball strikes out Garcia Garcia's striking out for the second time and Santiago picking up a six strikeout Garcia against Santiago now 0 for 13 with seven strikeouts. This one right down the middle. So one down in the seventh. You know we've talked about it. We'll probably talk about it again tomorrow. Jose Barrios and how he can learn a lot from Irvin Santana. He might be able to learn even more from this guy. Left-handed, of course. Barrios is right-handed, but the way Santiago goes about his business with being sneaky, fast, hiding the ball. Ball hit a long way foul. Well, I mentioned earlier too, Dick. He's got to watch also James Shields the way that yeah. he goes about over his head and gets to that balance point. Sanchez with two ground balls to the left side, up and away. It's one thing you never want to stop if you're a player in uniform is quit learning. You always watch. You watch the opposing pitcher. You watch your pitcher. What makes them successful? Foul back. Two and two. And Hector Santiago doing a good job of getting strike one, working ahead in the count, using the whole plate. That means from the letters to the knees, in and out, north and south, east and west. And changing speeds. Fast ball up, taken for ball two. That's called pitching. Foul back. Well, the Twins would love it if they've got in Santiago someone who can always pitch well against a team within their division. And he works quick too. You know, not a lot of time out there. Trouble down the right field line and it lands in fair territory. Kepler with a pickup and he'll hold Sanchez to a Texas League single. Yeah, only the third hit. Not much you could do about that. The inside out swing just flared down that right field line. Just landed in no man's land. Looks like that's going to be the end of the road for Hector Santiago. Didn't give up much solid contact at all in the ball game. 108 pitches, 70 for strike, so very good strike to ball ratio. And Santiago comes off the mound with one of his better outings as a twin in good position to pick up his 13th win of the year.
finish his season on a high note. Santiago's best outing as a twin coming in the final start he has for the twins. Well, again, he's had very good success against the White Sox this year. Came into the game 3 0 oh in ERA at 1.35. And he continued that here tonight. Only three hits allowed, six strikeouts, three walks for Santiago through 108 pitches. And his responsibility is Sanchez at first base. Hopefully, Buddy Boshears can do what he's been doing as of late, pitching outstanding. Boshears coming in for the 37th time over his last 12 ball games, covering 10 and two thirds innings, has 13 strikeouts. He's given up only one earned run. First pitch gets a flazy fly to center. Buxton with the catch, two away. And Boucher's now will try to get Lurie Garcia. There are the numbers on Boucher's. Only seven walks, one intentional in 35 and a third innings pitched. You like the opponent batting average, three home runs allowed in nearly 36 innings. That's good. Garcia has been called out on strikes twice tonight. But away ball one. Swing and a miss. One and one. And we talk about guys that are getting that opportunity and this guy has taken that opportunity and he's kind of resurrected his career. And I think particularly uh, gratifying is that you know, he had some arm problems the twins had to shut him down for a while and he's come back and pitched better than he did before the arm problem surfaced. Two and one. Now the numbers I gave you were the numbers he had since he's been off the disabled list back on September 2nd. The 12 appearances, only one earned run allowed, only six hits and ten and two thirds innings. Well, three and one with Eaton on deck. See it chases what would have been ball four. They saw that last pitch. Both Shears has that a lot of lefties could do that, not almost a two seamer that goes away to right handed hitters. Centeno wanting it in. That's hit to left center, and Schaefer comes in. To end the inning, Boshears gets the job done again. It's five nothing as we head to the eighth.
two but a bright spot here tonight Hector Santiago pitching well and we say that figuratively but also literally Michael Anoa you look at his numbers he'll pitch next for the White Sox it has been a long season literally we have had 16 rain delays 14 of them at home twins have had 16 extra inning games. Polanco on the first pitch lifts it into center field one down this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. Hey, you know a tall a hard throwing right hander in his rookie season. And Kepler goes after the first pitch and fouls it away. Kepler roll for three tonight. You know, at six foot seven out of the Dominican Republic. One and one. Fastball up. It's kind of built like a teammate of mine, Jim Bibby, with the Pittsburgh Pirates. They didn't make note of how hard pitchers threw back then, but how hard did oh, Bibby, Bibby throw? Bibby threw in, in the low 90s. But Three he had one. the biggest hands I've ever seen on a pitcher. The baseball in his hand looked like a golf ball. He had huge hands. Yeah, he one strong man too. I saw him pick up Dave Parker in the clubhouse over his head. Really? Yes. Of course, his brother Henry Bibby was a, a very good basketball player. Oh, no, I did not know they were they were brothers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Henry Bibby was a great shooter. My goodness, yes, he was. It's funny because Jim was about six seven, and Henry was like six two six three. Right. It should have been the other way around. Kepler drives on the right and making a catch out there is Adam Eaton. A couple of times Kepler's hit the ball right on the button has nothing to show for it. Every weekday morning Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp go head to head on the day's hottest sports topics. Undisputed with Skip and Shannon weekdays at 8.30 a.m. Central only on FS1. Now when I was a kid I wanted to play basketball like like Henry Bibby. I ended up playing like Henry Fonda. But I... <laughs> Two down. Here's Sano. Sano hitless. Couple of strikeouts and a line out to the third baseman, Frazier. Outside, ball one. Had a guy with this build, and he's been. The team escapes me. I just want to say the Giants. Deolas Guerra, big guy the Twins got from the Mets in the Santana trade. And his best pitch was a changeup, and probably still is, but he wasn't a hard thrower. If you get a big frame like that, you think, you know. Well, you probably pitched against J.R. Richard, right? Oh, yes. He was a big guy, 6'7, six, 6'8, six, right? Yes. How hard did he oh, throw? Oh, boy, he threw in the, in the upper 90s yes. with a nasty slider. 3 0 to Sano. He might be green lighted here. And instead, he takes a strike. Well, you know, in 28 innings, has not allowed a home run. 17 walks, that's high in the 28 innings, but 27 strikeouts. High fly to right field and Eaton retreats. And the Twins go down one, two, three in the eighth.
JT Shagwa will pitch next for the Twins in the eighth inning. You know, one thing we have seen improvement of, and, and Bo Shear's one of them. Here's another one, JT Shagwa. Over his last 12 starts, 10 and a third innings, only five hits, one run allowed, nine strikeouts, making his 25th relief appearance. You know, he came first came up. I'm sure you're nervous. He was kind of all over the place, a lot of walks, but boy, has he settled down nicely. With both, control of both, the fastball and the breaking ball. Mm -hmm. And he finds himself now pitching ahead on the count a lot more than uh, behind on the count. Ryan Dozier, we're told, left the game with right oblique soreness. So it's not an assumption at all that he'll be in the lineup tomorrow. One and one. Chagua's velocity has been evident up here. We were told upper 90s, and we've seen that up here. And if he can throw it over the plate, he might find himself a big part of the bullpen next year. Down the right field line, a foul ball. He got out in front of the slider. Yeah, it looked like an off-speed pitch right there. You know, Shagwa. You know, he signed by the Twins in 2012 out of Rice University, same place where uh, Tyler Duffy went to school. But he's progressed very nicely. This year, started Double A, advanced to Triple A, had good numbers there, both places. Two and two. You know the way they finish the season. I'm not so sure that Shagwa might be more counted on than mm -hmm. uh, Tyler Duffy right now because Shagwa's gotten it done in August and September. Two and two. Shook off the fastball twice. The changeup wants the slider. And he misses down and away. Eaton Anderson and Abreu here in the White Sox eighth inning. A couple of years ago, Shagwa started in single A, Fort Myers, and moved up to double A. So the progression and good numbers all places. And that will skip into center field. A chopper over the head of uh, Shagwa into center for a leadoff single. Let's go find Audra Martin. Thanks, guys. I was talking to bullpen coach Eddie Gordado about JT Shagwa. He said the thing that is so impressive about him is that he stays incredibly loose mentally throughout the course of the day, but that when that phone rings, he locks in better than anyone. He says with the way that he carries himself and his intensity, it might be easy to think that he has an ego, but he says he really doesn't. It's just laser sharp focus. But the next step they want to see him take is bring that swagger, that perceived ego to the mound, meaning that if a guy is getting a lot of hacks on him, give him a little chin music to keep him honest if he strikes a guy out they want him to you know, stare him down as he heads back to the dugout he says once that JT learns to compete mentally with some of these veteran hitters is when you'll really be able to see just how special this young pitcher can be for the twins in the future thank you Audra one and oh now to Tim Anderson swing and a miss kind of a decent bet I would think that Shears has pitched his last for the Twins this year, and this might be Shagwa's last outing of the year. He's had four double plays turned behind him. See if he get a ground ball here. Good speed at first base. Good speed at the plate. For a relief pitcher, that's a pretty big number of double plays. with a walk, a single, and a pop-up. <laughs> Anderson buckled on the breaking ball and took it for strike two. It's almost like a little spinner right there that just stayed in the upper part of the strike zone. Good breaking ball there. Runner at first, so Anderson strikes out. And no tag or throw necessary. Shagwa picking up a strikeout. His 17th in 22 and a third innings. So good tight break right there. And Anderson swings maybe at a ball, but he strikes out. And now Abreu, two walks and a fly ball. Right 
inside with another 97 mile per hour fastball. Shangwa's workload has increased as Ryan Presley's has decreased. There's a strike on that. Well, the pitchers are pretty consistent. The fastball's 97 and the slider's 87. Up out at second, relay to first. There's a double play. Double play, and Shagwa has a good inning, giving up the leadoff single, but facing just three men. Jorge Polanco started the scoring with a two run home run. The Twins have added three more, and we go to the ninth. And Kenny Vargas will lead things off here for the Twins. Vargas 0 for 3. And Michael Enoa out there for his second inning of relief. He relieved James Shields, who worked the first seven innings. Chopper right side, but look <laughs> where Sanchez is playing him. From short right field, Vargas is retired, one down. Braves added a couple of runs. They lead the Tigers now 5 2 late. And Toronto's leading Boston. Baltimore's already lost. Toronto holds on. That would be number 88 on the wins for them. They'd be tied with Baltimore back for the top two spots. Right. The Tigers would be a half game. They'd be, let me figure this out here. Like a game and a half. Game and a half out. Right. They could make up the game tomorrow and the half game on Monday. Right. right. 1 and 0 to Schaefer. Swing and a miss, 1 and 1. All right, one step, all right, let's go. Brandon Kinsley getting loose. He'll get the ninth inning. Four hits apiece for the two teams. But the Twins have five runs. Let's do a couple of home runs. Yeah, two two run home runs. After Shields walked Dozier, Polanco hit the home run. After Shields walked Schaefer, Buxton hit the two run home run.
Yes, I tell you, don't walk anybody. <laughs> Just missed the corner. That breaking ball went around the plate. Two and two. Buxton on deck. He's scored two of the five runs. <laughs> Twins fan sitting down. Got the first hop right behind the Twins dugout. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> two and two. And foul to the screen. We'll see Buxton hit after Schaefer's at bat. And I'll be curious under the assumption that Buxton is going to be playing every day next year, where the Twins will hit him. You know, what he's shown in September, the extra base power would make me be tempted to move him up in the order rather than hitting him ninth. Foul back. You know, he's getting doubles, triples, and home runs. He's going to get, you know, Every spot in the batting order over the course of a full season means 20 more. The higher you go, you get 20 more at bats or 20 more plate appearances. So I think I've, I've seen enough to where I'm going to be tempted to maybe put him up higher than ninth. Maybe not lead off, but. Decisions that Paul Mahler will have to make. Yeah. Schaefer strikes out. You know, picking up his first strikeout has retired all five batters he's been asked to face so far. You can follow Twins Baseball Live with the MLB.com at Bat app. Let me start this over. You time on this one. Okay, see how long it takes me to do this. Go. Follow Twins Baseball Live with the MLB.com at Bat app. You can customize at Bat to feature the Twins and stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast news, and more. Plus, subscribe to At Bat Premium to get the MLB.TV game of the day, radio broadcasts, in game highlights, enhanced game day features, and more. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Download MLB.com At Bat, the number one app for live baseball, on your phone and tablet. 27 seconds. 27 seconds. Mm -hmm. Is Kinsler in the game yet? <laughs> oh, Buxton's still batting. Okay, 1 and 0. One and one. I didn't hear a word you said, <laughs> but I was counting. Well, very but I, and you can't. I know work with you long enough to know you yeah. can't multitask. No. And if I ask you to count, it's a good thing I'm not chewing gum. <laughs> I couldn't count. Inside two and one. Well, Buxton hitting his ninth home run in that fifth inning. In his favor. Oh, okay. Pass ball Nar away. Narvez stole that one, I think, for the pitcher. My good friend Fox Tracks would have had that outside, I'll bet you. Two and two. Strike three, but Buxton's going to reach anyway. So second strikeout tonight for Buxton, but he's at first with two down. Strikeout and a wild pitch. A slider down and away. Got away from Narvis. Now let's see if Buxton tries to take off here. Why not try it? The wild pitch. That's his fourth wild pitch. Outside. And 
Centeno with an RBI double, his 24th run batted in in the seventh inning. Buxton drew a two out walk that inning, didn't try to steal. And Centeno brought him in with a double. Kind of an odd double for Centeno. Most of his go to left center. He pulled this one into right center. Two and one. Yeah, I, I said it at the time. I think that was a mistake by James Shields right there. He's so worried about Buxton stealing with two outs that he fell behind on Centeno and then came in with a fastball that Centeno hit the double. Three and one. Centeno drives it to left. Cabrera retreating, and that's over his head. And Buxton around third, he will score again. Another double for Centeno. And it is six to nothing. And picking up his second RBI of the ball game. So again, with two outs, Buxton off with a crack of the bat. And he scores from first base. He scored three runs tonight. Twice scoring on Centeno doubles. Well, fastball. Centeno hitting it sharply. And Cabrera goes back. And it's over his head. One hops the fence. And they get it back in, but Buxton too quick. James Beresford the bat. With Chris Sale going tomorrow. And Beresford being a left handed batter. And given what you said before, we don't know, you know what next year will bring for the likes of Beresford, a minor league free agent that you can sign with anybody. See if he can get his first big league run batted in here. Got a runner at second. Beresford got an infield hit his last time up. Crack foul, two strikes. One thing baseball does than any other sport, it gives you that opportunity to play the game as long as you want, even though it's a lot in the minor leagues, but finally get a taste, and they call it a cup of coffee in the big leagues. Embarrassed for getting that opportunity after 10 years in the minors. And a call third strike. Beresford is run up. Twins take advantage of a Buxton. Uh, a uh, strikeout that sent him to first base. Centeno with another uh, RBI. Schaefer giving that man a souvenir and the scare of the young person's life next to him. Happy Halloween. <laughs>Wins up six to nothing. Carsoup.com trivia question. I think it's going to be Hall of Famer Luke Applin. I'll say Nellie Fox. Eddie, Eddie Collins. Collins. 1920. Don't you remember him? 
Yeah. It was part of the uh, Black Sox game. At least part Luke of that Appling team. on that list. Yeah. Oh, shoeless Joe Jackson. Buck Weaver, they all were able to play in 1920, but then that was the end of their respective careers. Not Collins, he uh, was uh, exonerated and was able to continue his Hall of Fame career. Well, Brandon Kinsler coming in, making his 53rd relief appearance on Thursday. He ended up picking up a 16 save, but remember how that game ended yes. when he picked <laughs> off Gore at first base. The inning didn't uh, go too well for him. The Twins had a three run lead. He gave up two and then picked off Gore, but he did pick up his 16th save. And Looking he, for a little cleaner inning yeah. this time around. And you wonder, too, I mean, he's a sinker ball pitcher and he hadn't pitched much as of late, so you wonder whether that had anything to do with the poor outing in Kansas City. It's a ground ball on the second pitch. Escobar flips one away. So there haven't been many, if any, 0 for fours from Melky Cabrera against the Twins this year. Well, let's see what's next. Brought to you by Century Link. All baseball games tomorrow will start at 2 o'clock Central. And it'll be Jose Barrios going for the Twins, Chris Sale for the White Sox. Yeah, Sale will be back at just his second start of it against the Twins this year. They've missed him. Frazier, a wild swing and miss. And there are growing uh, reports circulating that Robin Ventura tomorrow will be managing his last game for the White Sox. That Rick Renteria will replace him starting next year. So and is that Robin's decision? Apparently it was in this case. There were reports a few days ago that the White Sox invited him back. And he said, well, I'll get back to you on that. Had a great first year here in Chicago, a winning record, and then four straight losing seasons. Well, a good baseball man. And a good man. Mm -hmm. He's been very uh, uh, friendly to deal with over the years, really admired him as a player. Two and one to Frazier. And a strike call, two and two. Check swing, but he went, and Frazier strikes out two down. Dean Kessler picking up a strikeout. <laughs> two down, and that'll bring up Garcia. Clearly a swing. Frazier, the 161st strikeout, excuse me, 162nd strikeout, and 586 at bats. Strike one. Strike two. And so trying to pin down the win for the Twins, just their 58th of the year. Amazing how clean a game can be if the starter goes see, out there and pitches well. Said that so many times over the last six innings when starting pitching has been such a sore spot for the Twins. When you see a well pitched game and a win for your team, it looks easy. You get a decent start, get a couple clutch hits, when I mean, there's no magic to it. We just haven't seen enough of it. <laughs> That's for sure. One and two. Did he go? No. Nicolette says he wants to stay here at least one pitch longer. Well, Kinsler going that slider down and away. Garcia's already struck out a couple times. Very close. Two and two. How about that one? 
a blade umpire. Pat Holbrook says it was a called strike. And the Twins get a nice pitching performance from Hector Santiago. And a couple of two run home runs by a couple of 23 year old guys. And a really good night at the ballpark. Yeah, I mean, we had really good pitching, some timely hitting, and James Shields ends up losing his 19th game, and Hector Santiago wins his 13th. Tom Hanneman, the Twins uh, had a good ball game tonight and uh, have a chance to win the series tomorrow.